Langstone Harbour, Southampton Marks. So Langstone Harbour is this one in here. As you can see, it's quite sort of shallow there. So it's sort of saying it's um, it's good at high tide to do some um, surf casting or some light estuary sort of gear you likely want. Which it holds um, school bass and some much larger specimens. We'll put an appearance in there and um, around sort of you know May, sort of June time, bigger fish and uh, September, towards the end of August, September in particular, maybe sort of a few weeks in October, I'd say your best fish are going to sort of, your bigger size fish are going to be in there. Um, so you can get your bigger bass on mackerel fillet um, or mackerel heads. You could use um, live baiting, uh, ragworms, big baits of ragworm, um, Lund squid, or what I call Californian squid, and peeler crab baits uh, would be your best bet there. So this harbour also has um, flounder, good flounder fishing in there with ragworm and lugworm baits, size one and size size two to one to one o hooks. I would say um, you could have a couple of hooks on a rig if you wanted. More uh, Victoria Pier. Victoria Pier. So let's just find Victoria Pier. Where art thou, Victoria Pier? Are we in here? I can't find it. I can't find it. Oh well. Okay, if I can't find it, I can't find it. I'm sorry. Um, so you're saying Victoria Pier offers mackerel and garfish to float fish baits and spinners in the summer with mullet a possibility in calm summer weather okay um, I'm still looking for that pier <laughs> but it's um, I think anywhere at high tide where you um, you know if you can sight some fish you sight some mullet sight some garfish it's going to be around high tide mark really so this is Portsmouth itself in here. You probably get much the same sort of fishing as you would do in here. This looks like it'd be a bit quieter um, than this area. Um, probably some good bait digging in there as well, I'd say. Um, so, so yeah, if you're going after your mackerel and garfish on float, for me, you want fresh mackerel as bait, and you don't want to fish it too deep down. You want your bait fishing quite high up. So whether you want to introduce um, a little bit of foam near your hook just to keep the hook up on some very light sort of fluorocarbon, like six pounds, something like that, um, and very small sort of hooks, um, size four, six, something like that. Um, another beach is Eastney Beach. Now, where is Eastney Beach? Let's see if we can find this. Eastney Beach. I think it's one along here. Where are we? Eastney Beach. I thought it was along here. Oh, here we are. Eastney. There it is. This stretch here. We've got along here. There's some different Eastney piers. Look, these would be interesting. Um, Eastney Beach. This one here. So let's just zoom out so you can see it. So it's this bit along here. So this is the Isle of Wight here. So you get a hell of a lot of tide ripping through here. Um, so let's investigate what it says about this, this one. Um, so it's talking about um, it's a steep shingle beach so it can produce place gurnard red mullet and black bream in the warmer months whiting cod pouting in winter so winter for your cod targeting your cod um, and um, yeah I think that's pretty um, pretty good venue really if you can get those species out of it so um, yes, it talks about you know varying your sort of your, your casting ranges. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I honestly don't think distance is the be all and end all. Um, if you're trying to cast at the horizon, you can have all sorts of issues trying to keep your bait on, unless you're sort of really good at sort of baiting up and baiting needles, lots of cotton and two hooks and all this, making very secure, very sort of sturdy, biggish sort of baits. That's, that's fair enough, and you can pelt it out. 
with a very stiff rod. I mean, that's fair enough. You whack it out, you, you, you know, you can sort of, um, you pick up more snags out there possibly. You could get, um, it could drag round, you pick up more weed, stuff like that. I'll be brutally honest, if it's going to be your night, you know, 60 to 100 yards should be all you need. It's more to do with if the fish are there on the night, you can get a lot of good fish very close in at all. So I wouldn't say casting is the, is the be all and end all. Um, it's more to do with using the right bait, fresh bait, um, keeping it simple, and being there on the right night. I mean, I would, I would, I would tend to go new moons as my sort of preferred. Um, and yeah, but I mean, I've not actually fished the beach. If if you go there on a on a big tide, it might be virtually unfishable, especially after a blow and there's been a lot of weed and stuff like that. So you might find that it's uh, very tidal. So neat tides, the smaller tides would be would soon, you know. So it's a real sort of it's a locals um, playground really, where you know it's a thing. I would speak with the tackle shop if you're going to attempt it, you know, and you're going to drive down there. You really do need to speak with the local tackle shop in Portsmouth. Talk to them about the beach and when it is best time to go. What's been coming out. Do you know what I'm saying? Instead of just taking a punt and trying yourself, you can do by all means, but I mean, I would just, I would just do that first. Um, so yeah, so, so we're talking about you know different caster ranges, bass, bass close in, what bit of surf running, flounder taken close in as well. So tide's coming in. Um, so Mayflower Park in Southampton. So let's just go to Mayflower Park in Southampton. So Southampton's up here. Mayflower Park, the Mayflower. Does anybody know where that is? Because I don't. Anyway, so if we do find Mayflower Park, oh, here we go, Mayflower Park, right up here. God, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? All right, fair enough. So here we are. So this is where I think Titanic set sail from one of these, I think. Anyway, he went on there. It's so Mayflower Park and seven. So Mullet to breed, earthworm, that's interesting, fish flake or maggot bait. So I never never heard of that, earthworm. Bread. It's almost like going freshwater fishing, maggots. I've caught I've caught mullet on bread. And I've actually caught them on bits of raw steak as well. So um, and you might be worth trying buying a very, very small sabiki, bait up with some steak, slivers of steak, tiny little bits of red blood steak, not cooked, and um, and literally just, just cast it out and just, just leave it submerged and just see what you can um, see what you can pick off. You probably pick off some other species as well. But if you can see some in the surface, mullet, early morning or in the evening, you probably want a carp controller, some fluorocarbon to a, a floating hook with just um, attached to um, a bit of floating bread with a bit of crust on it, tiny little bit, so, so it just sits on the surface. And that's pretty much it. So there's plenty of other species can be caught there. Bottom fishing, try two hook flapper rig, one o hooks, flounder whiting, school bass, and pounting could all be caught. So there's just options. Looks like you, yeah, you can park here, look, park, and you can just fish off here as well. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just too easy just to, to you know if you if you live in the city there and um, your options. But you know you get real surprised somewhere like that. You can get a big bass. I think this Leon Solent here that used to produce a really big cod once upon a time. Along here. Leon Solent. I mean, and obviously Portsmouth itself um, was going to. I know there's some real big bass a bit caught from in here. He who's prepared to sort of um, put the time in and keep fishing for him, the, you know, the big fish way, he will eventually land one. We get some monsters roaming around in there. But there you go. That's my um, Portsmouth guide, Langston Harbour guide. Hope you enjoyed. A few little pointers there. Um, okay, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.